Hello everyone. Oh shit. Hello everyone, I am Miss Ping and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. When we last left off, we were talking to Josie and now we are going to continue talking about Josie. Uh, we left off about uh, Antiva. Uh, what, uh, what's living in Antiva like? What's the land like in Antiva? The settled areas are quite lush. The vineyards run as far as the eye can see in some places. Antiva City, however, perches right up against the Rialto Bay. That's what I miss most. The sea crashing against the maze of the docks. Uh, you spent time there. I have difficulty seeing you wandering around a trading port. Everyone in Antiva City spends time by the ships, my lady. The finest restaurants and poets all make their habitation by the sea. The waterfronts never still. Lanterns are lit along the promenade no matter what the weather. Do you miss Antiva? Are you ever homesick? Occasionally. When a breeze stirs the trees in the garden, I sometimes pretend it's the sound of the surf. <sighs> Do you know, I even miss those terrible squawking birds infesting the harbor. My youngest sister used to throw whole loaves of bread to the gulls. Silly thing. Aww. What's your past with uh, Leliana? You and Leliana appear to know each other. I think I asked this before, we but... Met we think we met the last few years of my schooling yeah Seems terrifyingly long ago now uh what prom uh, what prompted the reunion how exactly did you and Leliana reconnect in the inquisition i discovered my family had been overcharging a merchant we traded with for months our name carries a great deal of trust in antiva i spent weeks arranging a string of favors as suitable recompense apparently satisfied the merchant extended me an invitation to her estate. Leliana greeted me in place of the merchant. That sounds like her. I assume there was more to it than a strange way to say hello. It was a test of sorts. Leliana claimed she needed someone of painful integrity for the Inquisition. I accepted, once she finally explained what it was. Are you still friends? Obviously. Do you remain close? Yes, but she's grown so much more distant than the outgoing woman I met in Val Royale. Leliana used to wander the Orlesian courts, singing the sweetest songs, charming the greatest wits. Now she collects secrets and takes risks that would make empires tremble. I worry, but she will not hear it. You talk often, then? Does Leliana confide in you? If she enjoys revisiting Armor. Disastrous adventures. Leliana used to concoct the most ridiculous plans. Run if you ever see her with a twine ball, a measuring stick, and a handkerchief. <laughs> What's your family like? Tell me about the Montilliers. Well, uh, my parents are alive and in good health. Uh, they live in our estate in Antiva City. Of my four siblings, most attend to the running of the family vineyards. <sighs> that reminds me. I must ask someone to make sure Yvette attends the spring reception at the palace. <laughs> My youngest sister has no head for social engagements. Uh, why are you arranging it? Why are you overseeing your siblings' social lives? It's Antivan custom. After a certain age, the heir apparent runs the family's estates to prove they're worthy of succession. If you're unfit for the task, the heads of the house, usually one's parents, may decree a new heir. That must require compromise. Oh wait, then what do the heads do? What do these Antivan heads of the household I'm curious, do actually. If they don't run it. They work and provide guidance. I've taken advice from my parents. Well, mostly mother. Father is more of an artist. It's rather gauche, but we never can dissuade him from running his own salons. Between him and my siblings, Mother is looking forward to my taking over the estate. That must require compromise. I imagine there must be give and take between a family heir and their parents. There is a fair amount of arbitration. Bickering, if one is less polite. But managing the estate is my duty. As much work as it is, I will not shirk it. You sound determined. 
Is running your family's estate that important to you? I'm responsible for their welfare. A Montelier never shuns their familial duty. Taxing as those duties can sometimes be. You'll never let go of them. You'd. I think you're too finicky to give those responsibilities <laughs> to the rest of your family. You don't know them. But Lorien in charge, or Antoine, or Yvette? No, truly. It must be me. Oh, where did you grow up? Where were you raised, Josephine? I was born in Antiva City. But when I turned 15, Mother declared I'd attend finishing school in Balroyo. Oh, but I bowled into her skirts the day I had to leave. That's too funny. <laughs> Did they have to pry your fingers off the doorframe as well? Admittedly, I may have been a trifle sheltered. <laughs> but my mother only wanted the best for me. Living in Orlais was an education in itself. What was the school like? What did you learn at this finishing school in Val Royale? Well, among other things, mathematics, rhetoric, poetry, history, logic, and a great deal of etiquette. I still remember Madame Beventir's switch on my knuckles when I forgot the basic tenets of Nevaran dining customs. For a dowager approaching her 80th year, she had quite the arm. <laughs> what did you think of Orlais? How did the younger you like Val Royale when you arrived? Have you ever stepped into a new city and felt the buildings couldn't possibly be real? Well, that was Val Royale to me. So beautifully foreign. I gaped at its spires for months. Are there none in Antiva? Does Antiva City have nothing that compares to Valorio? Antiva City is a jewel among the capitals. <sighs> but I did not appreciate that before I traveled. There are multitudes of places I'd like to see. Sahara, the Anderfels, whatever lies past the Amaranthine Ocean. Oh, that's it. Let's speak later. Another time. Uh... Anything else? Anything else? Come on. Anything else? Oh, I, I physically can't talk to her again. Okay, then. Okay, then. Uh, open the doors. Uh, uh, nothing over here. Let's go talk to Varric. I, I, I hardly talk to him. I need to talk to him more. Get more his side of things. Varric! Come on! What can I do for you, your inquisitorialness? Uh, let's finish up uh, the questions about Hawk. I read your tale of the champion, and I... That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. Uh, you made it the air shock fight. I'm sure it'll be like a disapproval, but at this point it doesn't really matter. There's no way Hawk really could have killed the Arashok. It would have started a war with the Kunari. I was told later that the Kunari disavowed his actions. Apparently the Arashok didn't get permission before he attacked Kirkwall and the Kuhn didn't want another exalted march. When they finally sent a ship to haul the Red Dreadnought away, they just said, We will never speak of this again. Huh. As far as I can tell, that's the Kuhn's version of an apology. Huh. Carry on. Well then. Need something? Or are you just here to admire the dwarf? Always. Uh, tell me about Bianca. Tell me more about Bianca. Hmm. I'm not making any promises here. Ask. Uh, why is the guild after her? What makes the merchant's guild such a danger to her? Well, to be fair, it's more of a danger to me. Technically, we're not supposed to be within 300 leagues of one another. What? If it got back to the guild that we were seen together, they'd freeze my assets and then have me killed. Maybe not in that order. What did you do? What in the world did you do Bruh. to cause that? We almost started a clan war. Does it matter? I, I can't change it now. Tell me! How do you know Bianca? How do you know Bianca? The lady, I mean. Not the crossbow. I met her years ago when she still lived in Kirkwall, and I was looking for someone with uh, mechanical skills. Bianca is, beyond a doubt, the most brilliant smith you'll ever meet. I haven't seen her since she got married and moved to Orlais. She's married? Bianca is married? 
Somehow I thought the two of you had a history. Bianca's family are Kalnas. Surface dwarves, so conservative they don't take a piss without asking the ancestors first. They picked out a smith cast boy for her. Wealthy, respected, has a great anvil collection. The perfect husband. I heard the wedding was lovely. The one Bianca actually showed up for, anyway. Aww, bruh. Did Bianca make your crossbow? No. Alright, tell me the truth. Bianca made your crossbow, didn't she? I mean, it has her name. Oh, it's not that simple. The Carta thinks my Bianca was a freak success by a Carta inventor who could never duplicate it. If they thought anyone else was involved, someone who could make one work, oh, things would be bad. So, I really can't tell the story. I don't want any more blood on my hands. Oh my god, dude! You can be straightforward with me! Ugh. So how long have the two of you been together? Well, if you want to split hairs, we're not. Usually there's a continent between us at all times. We write letters. Now and then we manage to meet up. I don't know if that's uh, together. Shit, it's been, what, 15 years? Great. Now I feel old. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess that's it for now. Sure. I'll be here. So did that guy make Bianca? Uh, obviously, the crossbow. And then Bianca Bianca fixed the crossbow? That seems to be the most logical sense of things. Huh. If you've got questions, I'm your dwarf. Except when it comes to, uh, Bianca. Why did... That's a pretty common reaction. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Carry it. That's dumb. Need something? Or are you just here to admire? Uh, I have personal questions. Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. <laughs> Where are you from? Are you from Ferelden? Ole? Free marches. Born and raised in Kirkwall. And despite whatever you've heard, no. Kirkwall's not that bad. Uh, how do you know Cassandra? How do you and Cassandra know each other? You heard about the Kirkwall Chantry being destroyed? The guy responsible used to be a friend of mine. The Seeker had questions about that. And I had answers. <laughs> uh, what do you do? I'm not clear on your line of work. You're a merchant? I'm a businessman. My family has a seat in the Dwarven Merchants Guild. Merchants buy and sell goods. Businessmen buy and sell stores. In my spare time, I manage a spy network, and occasionally, I write books. Congratulations. Uh, could you do Liliana's job? If you've run a spy network, why is Liliana our spy master? To be honest with you, she's... Just a better spy master. The truly great ones can keep their distance. They don't get attached to their people. Ah. Me, I always wind up babysitting my informants and worrying about their families. We're in better hands with her. Hmm. What books do you write? You're an author. What kind of books have you written? I've tried my hands at a few genres. My crime serials are my most popular. Hard in Hightown, guards breaking the rules to get things done. The Tale of the Champion is the most famous thing I've written, or infamous, maybe. Mm -hmm. And, well, you already know about swords and shields. To be honest, it's not a great serial. I don't have the knack for romances. Most of my stories end in tragedy. Probably that says something unfortunate about me personally. Uh, what shops do you own? What sort of shops do you own? Actually, we don't own shops. That was just an example. Mostly we invest in money lenders. Auction houses, a few mercenary companies, a couple of smithies. I think we own half a beet plantation in Ravane somewhere. Most of that's my brother's doing. Bartrand had business sense. Not much tact, but loads of business sense. Hmm. That's all for now? Thanks, Varric. No Ugh. problem. I thought I just heard someone go. <sighs> so fucking I can weird. Spare some time. What do you need? Uh, tell me about Red Lyrium. I want to know more about Red Lyrium. I'll tell you what I can. Uh, what is it exactly? So what is it? Just another kind of Lyrium. 
the red stuff is lyrium like a dragon is a lizard. It's not just a different color. It has a whole host of weirdness all its own. I've written to every mining cast house in Orzammar. No one's seen this stuff before or knows where it came from. Huh. Why would Templars take it? What could the Templars want with it? In Kirkwall, just having the Lyrium Idol made Knight Commander Meredith impossibly strong. Before it turned her into a Lyrium statue, anyway. Maybe they thought the power was worth it, or maybe they didn't know the consequences. Uh, where's the other thing? I think that's enough on Red Lyrium. Yeah. Come on, stop to talk making about. me leave the entire, uh, any personal... You want to talk about me? No, uh, come on. Come on. If you've got questions, I'm your dwarf. Tell me about Red Lyrium. Did it, like, I'll glitch out that option? Can. There it is. Why is it in the temple? How did the Red Lyrium get in the Temple of Sacred Ashes? I don't know. So as far as I knew, the only piece to make it to the surface was destroyed. And the location of the Taig it came from is a secret. Did someone huh. find more of it in the Deep Roads? That's not a cheery thought. Huh. I think that's enough on... Okay, last thing to I ask. Can spare some time. What do you need? Uh, tell me about Corypheus. What can you tell me about this Corypheus? I'm not exactly an expert, but ask away and I'll answer what I can. Uh, how did you find him? How did you first encounter him? A few years back, I was Ooh, dealing with some trouble I'm from sorry. a Carter clan that went rogue. They were sending assassins after the Hawk family. We tracked them to a rune in the Vimarks. It turned out to be a trap. Once you went far enough into the rune, there was a magic barrier that kept you from going back. The whole thing was a prison the Grey Wardens were using to hold what they thought was a powerful darkspawn. Why didn't they just kill him? I've never heard of Wardens locking up darkspawn. Why wouldn't they just kill him and be done with it? I don't think they could. From what we saw in there, Corypheus can control Wardens somehow. They couldn't attack him. The Wardens locked him up because there was nothing else they could do. He could also take over them, their bodies. What is he? He looks like some sort of blighted creature, but he speaks. What is he exactly? The wardens who imprisoned him thought he was just a darkspawn. But you heard him ranting. He claims he's a magister. One who assaulted the Golden City, what, more than a thousand years ago? Oh dear. That seems crazy, but if he's telling the truth, he's one of the people who caused the blights. Uh, you said he should be dead. You and Hawk both said before he was supposed to be dead. He was dead. We killed him. The only way for us to escape the prison Corypheus was trapped in was to go through him. We weren't going to just leave the door to his prison open behind us and hope he was dead. We made sure. Uh -uh. All right. I think that's enough about Corypheus. No problem. Maybe he took over that uh, one gray warden that was blighted. Or had the was dealing with the calling but uh i mean we heard of someone called L lavernius i guess that was what his name was we heard of someone that did something as lavernius how can i help why were you there tell me about your journeys i'd like to hear more about what you saw i would be happy to share it with you uh tell me about old ruins tell me about i found the ruin of barandua a lost Devinter city very deep beneath the dead and barren wasteland. Volcanic ash had sealed it tight. In one dark moment, every living creature in the city seared and smothered. They were statues in the ashes, like a mold made to recall the lost. Tell me about spirits? Tell me about a spirit you encountered. I met a friendly spirit who observed the dreams of village girls as love first blossomed in their adolescence. With subtlety, she steered them all to village boys with gentle hearts who would return their love with gentle kindness. The matchmaker, so I called her. That small village never knew its luck. Huh. Uh, tell me about old memories. Tell me about the old memories you found in the Fade. I saw a young canary working in a simple kitchen, baking bread as she was ordered every morning. In every loaf she broke the rules. She'd take a pinch of sugar and fold it into the center, like a secret. And this act of small rebellion brought a shining smile across her face. Huh. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Aww. My friend. Uh... Tell me about your journeys? I'd like to hear more about what... I would be happy to share it with you. 
Tell me about spirits. Tell me about a spirit you encountered. Must've... The Alamari crossed the Frostback Mountains to escape a beast they called the Shadow Goddess in their story. I met the spirit that they fled. She walked the fade along the southern tundra, weeping lonely and forgotten. Great for Elden formed because a lonely spirit drove her prey away. Tell me about old ruins. Tell me about the old ruins you explored. I found an ancient dwarven tide no longer sheltered by the stone. An earthquake had exposed it all to daylight. A thousand dwarven corpses lay, the victims of a dark spawn horde. Their last stand marked by one great ring of armor. In the middle, one small body, clutching tightly to a small stuffed toy. Huh. I don't know why, but maybe that was. Uh, what was in? What was his name? Uh, Sandal, maybe? That kind we'll of later. makes sense. How can I help? Tell me about your journeys again, dude. Happy to share it. Spirits. I found like pride oh, shit. or rage. It was the fade's reflection of a feeling. When I asked which one it was, the spirit faltered. They've forgotten, said the spirit. There remains no word for what I was. Tell me about old ruins. Tell me about the old ruins. I found in the Kokari wilds a humble cottage far removed from any of the simple chastened tribesmen. The trees and weeds did not reclaim the hope, nor did the chastened dare to come and steal the trinkets still remaining. Is that? It was empty, long abandoned, but the world feared that you might return. Was that Flemeth's hut? We'll talk later. Goodbye. What? How can I Bruh. Bruh. I'd like to hear I think I have shared everything of note. I should spend some time encountering more stories. Damn. Uh, tell me about Corypheus. I need then. to know more about Corypheus. You have waylaid all his other plans. Now, as a petulant child, he will destroy the game board rather than admit defeat. Be ready for anything. He still believes himself a god, and gods do not fall gracefully. Bye bye. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Uh, that all? My friend. Tell me about Corypheus. I need you have waylaid all his up. Oh. Be ready for anything. Yep. Oh, he bye. still believes himself bye. a god. Bye. And bye. gods do not fall gracefully. Bye. We'll talk later. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Ooh, it's coming along nicely. By the way, dude. Nice. Really, really nice. I like it. It looks really, really nice. Uh, let's see. Let's go and speak with Dorian. I thought I heard a noise. Weird, Dorian. What's on your mind? Uh, tell me about the Imperium. I'd like to ask you about Tavinta. Popular topic. Anything specific? Uh, Corypheus was a magister. Corypheus is a figure out of Tavinta history. He was a magister. Yes, but that was a different time. The Imperium's power was at its peak then. The Civil War had ended. The Magisterium was united, its armies scooping up bits of Thedas like candy. The Magisters who entered the Black City. It was a demonstration of how exceptional Tevinta had become. But who were they? No one knows. There's no record of a Magister named Corypheus. Oh. All this happened 1400 years ago, before the Blight nearly wiped us out. There are no records. Today, people half believe it's all just a story. And that's what I believe. But it's not a story. We have evidence the story is very much real. But not who Corypheus is. If he remembers. There used to be families who claimed some of those magisters as their own. That stopped when the Chantry appeared. Then it was shameful, and the families distanced themselves from the tale. All we know is that some men and women entered the Black City looking for the old gods. What did they find? According to Corypheus, nothing. And only he could tell us more. Hmm. Uh, the Imperium has a Chantry? There's an Imperial Chantry, isn't there? With oh shit, I hear background noises. I'm you sorry. You aren't supposed to talk about the Black Divine, are you? If you mention him outside the Imperium, people make that face. Like you're urinating in public. What? But yes, we do have the Chantry. Or a version of it. Night and day comparing it to yours. Okay, uh, is it really that different? 
Is the Imperial Chantry so different from ours? Not in theory. The main difference is in the whole magic is meant to serve man, not rule over him business. Back home, ruling the unwashed masses is serving them for the good of the Imperium. Perhaps it started mm. with good intentions, but these days it's academic. The circles mm. are in command. You have circles? There are circles of magi in the Imperium. We don't have dismal little mage prisons, if that's what you mean. They're academies, prestigious ones. We have Templars as well, but they don't cancel spells or whatever your Templars do. They're soldiers. They don't use Lyrium. Ha! As if there'd be any left for them. They watch for abuse of magic, yes, but only those who are weak or who fall out of favor get dealt with. Mostly they enforce their Magisterium's huh. edicts. The Chantry smiles and nods from the sidelines. Huh. Uh, the Black Divine? Do you really call him the Black Divine? <laughs> we don't call him that, oh no. In the Imperium, he's the true Divine. The woman sitting on the Sunburst throne is some backwater pretender. It all stems from a disagreement over Andraste. Marvelous, isn't it? A disagreement? Why would they disagree over Andraste? It's not my field of expertise, but the Imperium believes Andraste was a mortal woman, a mage. Down south, they say, no, she's the bride of the Maker, ascended to his side, divine provenance, a blah blah blah. We feel better believing Andraste was one of us. Makes executing her less damning, you see. So we elected a man as divine, the south declared war, and we've been feuding cousins ever since. Huh. I love how you're just... Oh dear. Uh, your divine is male. So... The Imperial Divine is always a man. All the better to distinguish him from that other one, yes. Don't think there aren't a number of female magisters who bristle at that. Why can't they be divine after all? Same reason you never see a man on the sunburst throne. Because that's how it's always been done. Excellent reasoning. <laughs> Are you religious? Do you consider yourself Andrastian? Ah. The big question. Oh, it really? might surprise you that I do consider myself Andrastian. I simply do not believe in the Chantry. Hmm. It is a relic, whether back home or here in the south. Something from a bygone age desperately clinging to relevance. It's not an opinion that makes me popular. Uh... The Chantry has its place. Others might object. My character. Uh, why can't it be like whatever? I was just curious. Uh, others might object. Yes, the Chantry has its place. Uh, well, let's just say the stance of the Chantry. Uh,. I agree with you. I share your opinion, actually. That's not surprising, considering what the Inquisition represents. <laughs> I'll say this. I may not believe in the Chantry, but I believe in you. Thank you. Me. That the Maker sent you, whether through Andraste or fate, Cassandra is not wrong. Huh. You are what we needed most at the moment we needed it. That's what they will say in ages to come. Uh, uh, I'm surprised you think that you're a fool. I don't know. I'm surprised you think that. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised you actually think that. You don't seem like the religious sort, to be honest. If you define religious as sitting in a chantry and listening to a blithering hen tell you how to live, then no. If you define it as believing in the possibility that something larger than yourself exists, then yes. By all means, the world is bigger than I, even bigger than you. It laughs at all the things we think we know. The Maker doesn't need me to believe, but I do. The thought of no one at all watching out for us is too frightening. I uh, want to ask something else. Let me ask you something else. So many questions. Of course. Uh, could Tevinter be an ally? I'm wondering if the Imperium would be a useful ally. 
I'd think you'd be more concerned whether or not they'd support the Venatori. They won't. At least, not officially. They'll disavow all knowledge of dangerous cultists. Secretly, many Magisters will rejoice at the idea. And if the South falls to chaos in the meantime, all the better. Is that smart of them? It would be in the Imperium's best interest to help. Surely it could use allies. I think the Imperium gave up on the idea of allies a long time ago. We've been fighting the Canari for what? 200 years off and on? It's a point of pride that we go it alone. They'll sneer at the South behind their silk handkerchiefs and say, You've had it easy for far too long. Let's not forget that the Inquisition like seems to be an arm of the Orlesian Chantry. Anathema so far as they're concerned. But we're not. We're not part of the Chantry. The Chantry opposed the Inquisition's formation. You think that matters? Don't be silly. The Herald of Andraste. Your very title smacks of the Southern Chantry. You may as well be a heathen. I think they're far more frightened what you'll do if you succeed. Ah, that's it for now. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. That's enough. I should go. You know where I'll be. Uh, well, we are going to continue on with our conversation with Dorian in the next episode. <sighs> Judging by how long this is taking, it may be, uh... Um, it may take the whole week to go through all the conversations with every fucking one. But, I mean, whatever, we'll get through it. Okay. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I hope you all have a fan-tabulous day.